Hello there and welcome to the FA Cup preview for Aston Villa versus Liverpool. Now I held off making the preview for this video because we didn't know whether this game was actually going to take place. And it was only, let me just see, what was it two hours ago? I think it was like two hours ago we actually had confirmation. Maybe even a little bit earlier because I think the club's uh, Aston Villa actually tweeted out a little bit earlier as well in the day. So we're talking maybe two, three, four hours ago we actually got confirmation <laughs> that the game is going to be going ahead tonight at 7.45, Aston Villa versus Liverpool. Now, I'll read out some stuff here from thisisanfield.com, who were um, do it, who've done an article on it. Um, Aston Villa confirmed on Thursday that the club had suffered a significant number of cases within their senior squad, squad which cast doubt over, over the third round clash. The senior squad won't be involved on Friday night with the manager Dean Smith and his coaching team also absent. Um, this is the next paragraph that they wrote as well. It presents an ironic situation after Liverpool fielded a youth team at Villa Park just over a year ago, managed by Neil Critchley in the Neil uh, in, the, in the Neil Cup <laughs> in the League Cup, as the first team were competing in the FIFA Club World Cup. Um, so obviously, since then we've had confirmation that it will be a under twenty three side for Aston Villa, which will be primarily. A mixture of under 18s and under 23s i think that is it that is what we've seen uh so far anyway so it's difficult to really to predict how aston villa are going to line up because they're not going to have any first team senior players no dean smith no coaching staff as well no first team coaching staff as well so it is it's going to be really really difficult to predict how how they're going to line up so we're not going to focus on that at this moment in time, there are people, I don't think they're Liverpool fans, in my opinion, um, there are people that do believe that this game shouldn't be taking place at this moment, that it should be postponed and all that sort of stuff. However, the rules do state, from what I read, if you can field or you can have available 14 fit players, which obviously means you start an 11 and three substitutes, if you can do that, then the game must go ahead. So, obviously all the Liverpool fans as well are going and comparing to the, when the Club World Cup situation, which was mentioned there just a little bit earlier. The Club World Cup situation was, in my opinion, it was ridiculous. And I think the words that I used at the time was something close to, it was like we were being punished for being successful because we were in the Club World Cup competition because we won the Champions League the season before, the EFL or the I think it was the EFL um, for the uh, for the League Cup uh, would not allow us to move that fixture. They said that fixture cannot be moved anywhere. And going back into other history, when the likes of I think maybe Manchester United in two thousand eight or whenever that was, they actually were allowed to have their fixtures moved, or they were allowed enough time in between fixtures where it wasn't a clash. People keep saying, oh, Liverpool couldn't do it and they couldn't play games two games within tw within 48 hours. That wasn't the case with Liverpool. It was literally would have been two games within 24 hours. That's what people really are missing. It was not two days. It was 24 hours. So we had to make it. Liverpool made a decision. The Club World Cup is something that I don't think we'd won until we won it. And nobody gets to compete for it unless you win the Champions League in Europe. That's how rare it is to go for. So Liverpool made this, the decision to go for the Club World Cup. The EFL, or whoever it is that's in charge of it, uh, would not allow us to have any sort of delay on the League Cup. So we did what we thought we had to do. People think that we we still disrespected the domestic trophy, but... I don't understand what people were. I don't understand what people were getting. Anyway, I'm digressing from this current fixture. Um, anyway, so we're gonna go and start looking at lineups and such like that. Does it change how we actually line up? Does it change how we line up? Now I'm looking here at the Sofa Score app and what they're putting up. Now they're still putting up um, all of uh, the predicted lineup for Aston Villa. Still contains pretty much a lot of their first team, that isn't got what's going to be on there. You're not going to see the likes of Ollie Watkins, Ross Barkley, um, Jack Grealish, all that sort of pick. You know, you're not going to see those players. But for Liverpool, 
does this change how we approach this game? My opinion, it shouldn't really. Now, I still had some thoughts on, on how we were going to line up in this game anyway and, and what we possibly might do with some changes because we'll have Man United next week as well in the in the league. And I don't think that we should really move too far from that and start getting more youth players involved. We should probably stick with a sort of plan of what we should be going with for this game. So, with that being said, I'm pretty sure we, we, we actually still have the likes of Simikas still out injured. So, whoever plays at left back, I imagine it would be Andy Robertson. Um, in goal, for me, for this game, I would put Kelleher in there because he's never really put a foot wrong in my opinion uh when he whenever he's played in goal for us he's been brilliant um, and he's a nice calming figure and it gets him much more game time for uh, well in this competition anyway i would have kelleher in goal uh nico williams in at right back and then do we go with a center back pairing of um nat phillips and reese williams i say why not fabinho is very rarely going to get a rest not until we do something about the centre-back situation, which, as you know, I'd said in a video where we were looking at centre-backs maybe a week ago or something, that I felt we weren't going to sign anyone in January. And Klopp pretty much confirmed that yesterday, that a January signing isn't completely ruled out, but a centre-back is very unlikely to be coming in to the club. Now, the risk, obviously, with that we, we carry here by playing Reese Williams and Nat Phillips at centre-back is if one of them gets injured. Then you, then we really do. Well, there's no other phrase for it, and I do apologise for swearing. Then you're up shit creek without a paddle. You don't really have any other options. You'd have to go with a permanent partnership of Reese Williams and Fabinho, or Nat Phillips and Fabinho, because you also have to recognise that while Joel Matip is a great centre back, he's a good centre back when he's involved. Great is probably too high of a pedestal to put him on, but he's a good centre back. He's very solid centre back, and he's done very good for us. He will most likely be involved if he's ready against Manchester United. So, and then the, and the same with Fabinho. So you do have options that we can rotate a little bit, but they again, they're just injury-prone players. So it's a risk. At the moment, I would like to see Reese Williams and Nat Phillips paired up together. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, that's my back line and everything. And it still contains leadership. It's got captain quality leadership in that back line with Robertson, obviously because he's Scotland captain as well. Um, so you've still got experience in there along with the younger guys. Into the midfield, um, SofaScore has us playing a 4-2-3-1. Um, I doubt it. I'd be very, very surprised if we do. But if we do, I'm all for it. Um, I'm going to go as if we're doing a 4-3-3. And what I would like to see, whether he will be involved or not, I'd like to see Thiago uh, involved. I just want to go and check and see if we have anybody like new out injured. <laughs> it's just in the last five minutes. I just want to check that we haven't got anybody else out injured. Um, Thiago, I'd like to see him get minutes in this game. I really would. Um, because he is a controller. He's very good. In my opinion, when we were playing against Southampton, I felt he started to lose his head a little bit like quite early on. Um, but let us just see here. So, injury list... So Nabi Keita is still on this injury list here. Whether he's actually injured or not, I'm not sure. If he could be involved, that'd be fantastic because he would he would actually be part of my midfield. What normally happens in cup games is we tend to get Milner involved. Um, so you could see a midfield three of Thiago, James Milner and Curtis Jones. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I think that'd actually be a pretty positive midfield. There are other options as well, but they might be used a little bit further forward, which is what we're going to look into in the next uh, the next steps of this lineup. But I think a Curtis Jones, uh, Naby Keita. Did I say Naby Keita? If Naby Keita is not injured, I would have him in this midfield. Um, otherwise, it'll be Curtis Jones, James Milner, and Thiago. I think that's a pretty decent midfield. You've got obviously Milner that does all that will do all of the grunt work. Um, and the massive, a massive amount of creativity that you get from both Thiago and Curtis Jones and a lot of running from Curtis Jones as well. It could help. It could be really good. Help us win some midfield battles here. As I say, I don't know what midfield, what line we're going to come up against. I don't know any of Aston Villa's youth team. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you and say that I do. I don't know any of their youth team. Um, so, yeah, into the front line. Now, the front line is probably where we could see the most changes. 
Now, I think SofaScore have us down for having Divock Origi up front with Oxlade Chamberlain. Um, and who's the other one here? Um, let me just see what they they are thinking. Um, so they have, please load. Yeah. Um, they have us in a front, they have us in a front four. Now, for me, obviously, it's a front three. Divock Origi would not take part in this one. Not up front, not for me. Um, for no other reason than I don't... Is Divock Origi sticking around at Liverpool? I don't know. Not entirely sure. If he is involved, I'd expect him to be involved from the bench. What I would like us to do as a front three, to get more minutes for Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and Jordan Shaqiri. So I want... Oxley chamberlain on the left-hand side. I want Shakiri on the right-hand side. And I want Minamino through the middle. We have not seen enough of Minamino. For someone that's not injured, we have not seen enough of him. And that's not good, in my opinion. He's a very, very talented player. Whenever he comes on, he gives you a lot of energy, a lot of running. Does give you creativity if you play him in the right areas. And I think that this could be a good game to get him involved Let's see what he... Let let him play like a whole 90 minutes or something like that. Oxlade-Chamberlain, it'd be great to see him. I'd love to play him in the midfield. Um, but I think as needs must, as a wide player, and also to give the likes of Mane and Salah a rest, use him as a wide player because he is quick. He is good with his feet. He's good at shooting either from distance. He can be good in the box as well. But he can also spot a pass. The same, very, very same can be said for Jordan Shakiri, but for me, on a higher level, I think in terms of passing range and vision, I think his passing is so underrated. Um, and I think his ability to spot a pass is just... I don't know if we really have anybody apart from Thiago that really does what what, Shiki, what Shakiri can do. Shakiri might not have the, pl uh, the pace of Oxlade-Chamberlain and certainly not of Mane and Salah, but he's a very, very tricky player. Very good close control, low centre of gravity... I think he could cause some good some problems. He's good at, at set pieces as well. Can score a free kick if need be, and that would be my lineup: Origi and such for the bench, and maybe a bit of a you know a younger, maybe other some younger guys maybe maybe involved like Leighton Clarkson for example um, could be someone that is involved. But I think that that is a good, um, a good quality eleven to go in competitive in this game while also giving some key members of our first team a good rest right up until we play against Manchester United in the league. That's going to be a big game, a very, very important game as well. But let's focus on this one for now. Honestly, in terms of a score prediction, I would expect a Liverpool win because of what we're going to be coming up against in terms of the younger players of Aston Villa. And that's no disrespect to them, but with the experience that our players have and the ones that I've named in my lineup for Liverpool, they've got head and shoulders more experience at you know in our first team in and around our first team and the players and the teams that they've played against and the competitions that they've all played in as well champions league experience high level premier league experience as well we should be going into this game without a doubt of going in to win it however there is always the chance of a cup upset there shouldn't be in this game there really really shouldn't be but there is always the chance that that could happen um, and I certainly hope that it doesn't happen because Liverpool need, we need a spike of, we just need some inspiration in this team at the moment. Controlling games is, is, is good, but it's only good if you actually get a good result at the end of it. And that's what we've not been getting recently. Two draws against West Brom and Newcastle and a loss against Southampton. And for a lot of them, you end up seeing loads of possession, loads of chances, almost zero shots on target. You're not working the goalkeeper hard enough. Or like against Newcastle, the guy actually has uh, the game of his life. These sorts of things can happen with young players at other clubs as well. I don't know what Aston Villa's youth setup is like, so I can't, you know, I can't talk good about it, and I can't talk, I can't criticize it either. I, I, I don't, I, what, what can I say? But I'm expecting Liverpool to go out there and and put in a good performance. Whoever is in our lineup, put in a good performance. Give us a lift before we go on and play Manchester United because, like I said in, in another video, I'm not confident of results going forward. And I should be. Like, when people are saying you're going to be facing Aston Villa's under-23s, 
fair play. That's great. But you still need to go out there and earn the result. Work hard, play hard, and earn the result. That's what they need to do. The result is never a given. You have to go and get it. So I hope that's what this Liverpool team do. I'm going to go for a 3-0 victory for Liverpool in this one. Not a disrespectful scoreline in my opinion. You know, a lot of people turn around, oh, we should smack these lot 5-6-0. Let I don't, to be honest, <laughs> however we win a game, I don't really care. If we control a game, um, have majority possession and we win the game 1-0, I can't really argue against that, to be honest with you. Um, and with it hopefully not involving a great deal of the first team, then hopefully we should be able to get a good result out here. And also, touch wood, actual wood, there we go, not MDF. Um, <laughs> that's what my desk is made out of. Please, I'm not rich. Um, and hopefully also, no injuries. God, that's what, that, that's, we just wouldn't need any of that anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below about any of that that I've talked about in this video. Please do get your thoughts and comments in the comment section below and let's, let's have a discussion about stuff. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you are new around here. Thank you once again. Do take care of yourselves and I'll catch you later.